Hey Budget Gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as I give you a garden tour. It is now middle of April and it is early spring. So let's go. We're gonna start on the south side of my house and what we're looking at is a nursery bed. It's basically a temporary holding bed that I put together last year. And it's composed mostly of plants that I winter sowed in, winter, in jugs last winter. And that I needed a place to put all these plants and I put them in this bed. So all the winter sown perennials that are in this bed are now a year old. And in this bed there are also some perennials that I got from my landscape that I divided and didn't really know where I was going to put them in the landscape. So I just wanted to put them in the holding bed. So that's basically what's in here. And I will be doing a separate video that goes over all the plants in this nursery. Right now, there's not a lot blooming in this bed, but you can see that there's some daffodils that have buds on them. There are also geranium, Stelladora daylilies, there's peonies, there's bleeding heart, which actually should be blooming pretty soon. There are a number of roses. There are tree stumps in here. And we had a bunch of uh, trees that were actually old and were gonna fall down. They were dead. So we had, that, had to have them removed. Um, what else do we have? We have rhododendrons in here. There is bloodroot. Glory of the Snow. Trying to remember what else is in this bed. Uh, it's hard to tell when it's just basically barely waking up. And then, yeah, just a few more different types of hydrangeas. So it is jam-packed with lots of fun stuff. And I'll be giving video updates later in the season so you can see everything in its glory. We are looking at some birdies raised beds that I recently filled with strawberries and blueberries. And I did a video on that recently. And I also put in some raspberries that I had in my backyard raised garden bed. I have a ton of winter sown milk jugs from this past winter. And I'll be doing a reveal video on all of those milk jugs shortly. And in the empty raised beds, I plan on putting spring flowers in here flowers like stock and ranunculus. So I plan on doing a video on that pretty soon. Over here are a number of pots that are just filled with plants that couldn't fit in my nursery bed. There's a bunch of lilacs that I got from my sister-in-law's house, as well as various other plants that I just wanted to overwinter. This is also an area where I have more pots and all of these pots that you're looking at were overwintered in my raised bed in my backyard. I just healed them in for the winter so that they were protected all around their pots and they seem like they all survived. I highly recommend when you're going to overwinter plants, especially in a cold area like zone five where I live, you want to make sure that you protect those pots and healing them into the ground is the best way to do it. And right near these pots, you're looking at a big pile of compost. And I recently put out a video going over how I put together all the material in my compost pile. So be sure to check that out. And in the same area is one of two greenhouses that I recently put up. And inside the greenhouses, or in, actually inside this one greenhouse, is all my spring crops. And so I've had videos that go over all of my spring crops, but it's mostly stock, alyssum, pansies, lettuce, and let's see, onions, as well as ranunculus in this greenhouse. I need to get going. I need to get these planted. So pretty soon I'm going to do a video showing me planting up all my window boxes and hanging baskets, as well as my raised beds with these flowers. We're looking at my rolling cart and I've switched out all the plants. All the plants that you've seen on here before have now been moved into the greenhouse 
And the plants that are on here are plants that I did have indoors. And as you know, these are all plants that I started from seed or they were tubers that I overwintered. And there's mostly asparagus, there's some dahlias, geraniums, we have some basil, some salvia, there's beautyberry, we have begonia, lots and lots of peppers, which actually are looking great now they're out now that they're outside. They were looking a little yellow inside. And some of them, some of the peppers even have blossoms on them. And since I live in New Hampshire and our growing season is very short, I definitely will not be topping off my peppers. I plan to keep them as is. And finally on the bottom, we have some vinca down here. Look how gorgeous it is. It's starting to really bloom. And it also, again, it just looks so much better and healthier outside compared to how it looked inside. And as we move down, we have some ageratum and some vinca. So lots of great stuff in here. Or sorry, not vinca, verbena is the last one there. We are still on the south side of the house and towards the front of the bed, are white as well as hot pink dianthus. And I did a video showing how I cut that back quite a few weeks ago and gave it some fertilizer. So that's really looking good now. We have a lot of white bloodroot. And then we also have some muscari, which is a nice purple color. And there are plenty of yellow daffodils looking so cheery and happy. And then there's some glory in the snow and there are some hot purple hyacinth in there as well and there are a lot of other plants in this bed i'm not going to go over all of them i'm going to wait till they start showing you know growing a little bit more in this bed and i do have a cold frame here that my wonderful brother and sister-in-law put together for me and inside of it i'm keeping some dahlia tubers that i'm pre-sprouting the weather has been unseasonably warm, so the, I was able to put the dahlia tubers in there. We are going to have some nights that are in the low 30s, maybe low to mid 30s pretty soon. And when we have those nights, I will move the dahlia tubers. And we're heading over to my porch. And this is my side porch. I have done a few videos on my side porch. I absolutely love my side porch. I love to sit out here, relax, sit with family or friends. It's actually also a place where I do a lot of my potting up when I'm working with plants. And also in this area, there are two pots that I recently put together that are filled with some lettuce and alyssum, as well as some perennials. So that sh that's looking even a lot better now than the day I planted it still you know has a ways to go in terms of growth because i did put small plants in there but it is looking really pretty towards the front of this bed is a perennial type type of larkspur and you can see that there's still some white bloodroot in here as well as the purple muscari every year what i try to do is i look at my flower beds i look at the colors and i see i notice colors that i want to add to this bed and I just move things around. I keep dividing and moving things around. That is a great way to save money. I don't want to just keep going out and buying different plants. I love all these plants and they, it's better for the plants to be divided anyway. So even this spring, I'm just walking around, looking around my yard, and I already have plans of dividing, for example, the muscari in places where that's going to go. I recently dug up some pulmonaria as well as some daffodils. That's why they're in the pots. They will be going in the landscape pretty soon. And then I have lots and lots of window boxes and hanging baskets that I need to fill. I should be doing a video on that as well pretty soon. This is primarily a hosta garden. So you really can't see anything going on in there right now, but pretty soon there'll be hosta in there. I did shred up leaves last fall, and that's what you see right now in that bed. And then we have some pulmonaria. I love it. I just think it's so striking and pretty in the springtime. And as we walk down this path, I have, I continue to just keep dividing and moving plants. So lots and lots of bloodroot. I do have a little bit of pulmonaria here and there. And you can see that there's quite a bit of a hookara, a red colored hookara.
And then over here, we also have a forsythia. And it's not really blooming a lot this year. I do need to look into why my two forsythia bushes are not blooming as much as they did last year. So I, I'll have to research that a little bit. I'm not quite sure. There, the, there are a lot of perennials in here yet to bloom. So I'm really just going to focus on the perennials that are currently blooming. So you see some glory in the snow, some more bloodroot. And there are daffodils sprinkled here and there that are budded up. They're just going to bloom a little bit later, partially because this area gets more shade than some other areas. Here's a cute little path that I made to my neighbor's house. We like to hang out a lot, so it's nice to have that handy. And you'll notice in this bed and in the previous bed that there's some irrigation lines that we've put down. I do have irrigation in my lawn and I do have ir irrigation in some of my flower beds, but all these flower beds that are on the perimeter of the yard do not have actual irrigation hooked up to our irrigation system. So we're, we've started putting the line down and we're going to get it all hooked up so that it's watered on a regular basis because it is awfully dry where the lawn ends and where the woods start. And I want to make sure that any plants I'm putting out here are getting lots and lots of water. And you'll see, I'm going to keep it real, I have lots of weeds I, and that's totally okay. I wanted to make sure I filmed this spring video tour showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think as a gardener, we have to be realistic with ourselves that that does happen. It's okay. So I'm slowly taking my time going through the yard and working on each of the beds. We are looking at some beautiful daffodils that I planted here a few years ago. I keep dividing and moving all these daffodils around and uh, I just want them everywhere in the in my flower beds. I think they're so pretty. They're such a cheery sight in the, in the springtime. This bed in particular has a ton of weeds in it and some sort of a, you know, just grass that's taken over. So, I'm slowly working on it. You can see towards the front of the bed how pretty it looks when I've edged it and weeded it. So I'm just making my, my way through this bed. It's full of peonies and iris, lots of daylilies. I also planted a bunch of spring bulbs in here because I wasn't sure where I was going to put them in my yard. So I kind of used it as a nursery bed. So I'm looking at them and paying attention to what's blooming and thinking about where I'm going to move them. Once the, once the blossoms have gone by and the leaves are just starting to fade, at that time I'm going to dig them and move them. I'd rather do that in the spring than the fall because come fall time all the, all the dead leaves will be gone and so I won't be able to find the plants anymore. The lawn is finally starting to green up. Over here is my backyard raised bed. And there are a couple of issues going on with it. First of all, the wood is definitely falling apart. It needs to be replaced. And the second thing is when I made this bed, I made it too large. And so I will be working on this bed most likely in the fall. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna turn it into two possibly three smaller raised beds and at that time i will make a video and show you how i go about doing that but currently i'm going to show you a zoom i want to zoom in and show you the asparagus that's coming up i love asparagus
And the other thing that, that, let's see, there's a few other things in this bed. There are some chives and I plan on digging those out and putting those into some containers for spring containers. And I have a lot of creeping Jenny in here. I'm gonna be putting those in all my hanging baskets and all my window boxes. I put them in the garden just as a temporary place for them. The final thing that's in the raised bed is some, are some grapevines and I really need to prune them. So I'm gonna be working on that pretty soon. Very close to my backyard raised bed is a rose garden. It used to be an area where I had a small kids pool set up. And when the pool got removed, I ended up with this big, huge circle in the middle of my lawn. I was gonna grass it in, but then I decided to turn it into a flower bed. And so on the inside of the flower bed are a bunch of daffodils. And I got those actually from my mother-in-law's house. And when they bloom, I'll be sure to show you, they're so pretty. And then on the outside part of the circle are a whole bunch of different roses, many roses that came from my mother-in-law's. In fact, most of the plants that you see in my yard are from my mother-in-law's gardens. She had beautiful gardens. And then I also have some glory in the snow in this bed as well. And as I look at this bed and I'm, I'm looking at that purple flower, I'm noticing there's areas where it's filled in with the purple flower, and then there's areas that are empty. I'm taking notes. I'm gonna be moving those around to make sure that I have all my spots filled in this bed for next year. So as we head away from the raised bed in my backyard, I have a bunch of hookera and when I put the hookera down towards the front of the bed, I didn't know where I was gonna put it in my yard. So I am definitely planning on moving that all around my yard. I just think the red color looks so pretty. And there's, there are perennials in here, but they just haven't started popping up quite yet. They're just barely coming up. There are some spring bulbs though. So you see that we have daffodils and there's hyacinth in here. There are definitely some bulbs that were probably too small and they're not blooming. I have some more glory in the snow, more of the spring larkspur, and um, a forsythia bush here. Look at all the pretty colors of the hookera. So pretty. Lots of daffodils. These were, I call them freebie daffodils. My mother in law didn't like these daffodils and she put them in this one area where she used to put all her brush pile. And I've been going each year and it's kind of like my secret garden. I've been digging those. It's, it's kind of like a light yellow with a dark yellow in the center, daffodil. So that's why you see so much of it in my yard. And then I do have some leopard's bane. I have that in a number of spots. It is such a cheery sight in the springtime. I've had so much fun gardening where the lawn ends and the wood start. It's pretty much now all the full perimeter of my yard and I just keep adding plants to eat all the different areas. In this bed, there are a ton of Stella Dora daylilies. My sister-in-law had a lot of them and she just wanted to thin out some of her plants. So I took them, we divided them together and I planted them in here. Here are more of my freebie uh, secret garden daffodils. I really love them. I just think they're so pretty. Because we live with woods all around us, I'm always fighting that battle with leaves, but it's part of, it's part of living in the woods. I have been working very hard to amend my soil with my own compost each year. So I already know where I'm going to put some compost later this year, certain beds that need it. And this bed here, we have more daffodils and more Stelladora daylilies, and then lots of blue fescue. And there's a big lilac tree in there. And down in this bed here, 
some of the same flowers you've seen. There is a hydrangea bush in the center there, and then there are also ladies' mantles sprinkled within this bed. We are back at the starting point, which was the nursery, and I'm going to show you one last bed that I have in my yard. So we're going to head up my driveway. And it's basically my front walkway. This is definitely a bed that I want to spend a lot of time working on this year. I feel like everyone's front walkway should be glorious. And I'm, I'm always trying to figure out what I want to do with this bed. So keep in mind, it's work in progress. What we're looking at here are, it looks like weeds, but they're actually pansies that overwintered from last year. And I was going to take them out, or at least most of them out, but my husband has convinced me to keep them in there, at least for the spring. He said that it should provide a lot of beautiful color. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to pretend it's not a weed because it's not. They're pansies, and they're clearly very happy. And as we head down the walkway, there are more of the spring larkspur. Again, as I've said many times, I just keep dividing and moving my plants. We have more of the bloodroot, more of the muscari, and then over here, when we turn towards our right, we have a pond that I still need to clean out and hook the, pu hook the pump up to, but it gives you an idea that we do have a, a pond that we put in years ago. And there's a, another pot that we had put together in a previous video. It's looking very happy. I do have some boxwood. I'm not happy with the way they look. I am very likely going to dig them out. I, I, what I'm thinking of putting in front of my house here is possibly a weeping cherry tree. Some sort of a small tree that doesn't get very big but still looks beautiful. So this bed in particular I am going to work on. It is where my septic is, so I have to be mindful of that. It's in the center of this bed. But there is more leopard's bane that's bl uh, blooming right now, and then lots of Stelladora daylilies. And this irrigation mess that you're looking at is where I've put tomato plants as well as pepper plants in pots in this area for the simple reason that uh, I can put irrigation to them very easily, but more importantly, because it is full sun right there. But I might be changing where I put my tomatoes and peppers this year, so I'll keep you posted. I hope you enjoyed that tour. I plan on giving you plenty of more tours as the spring progresses and as we head into summer. Until then, make it a great day with gardening.